PSA. It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by PointsBet. Use the promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. I'm Luke Stuckmeyer on Twitter. That is at Luke Stuckmeyer. And look who's back. Back Back again. again. Ryan Ryan Herrera. Back from Arizona. Ryan underscore A underscore Herrera. Corey Freeman in the house uh, with a little bit of (laughs) in-your-face. Wow. We'll discuss that. I remember when Corey came in all quiet on the first day. He had this long hair thing (laughs) going, this crazy beard. He's like the reverse Samson. He shaved it off, and all of a sudden now he's in here talking smack. He's throwing down his do right donuts bag in my face when he gets here. Then he then he pulls out a Michigan jersey and throws it on. Listen, I told everybody yeah. I'm at home today, minding my business. I joined the CHGO Bets show to watch my guys mm-hmm. Cody and Sean. And what am I greeted with? A bunch of University of Michigan slander. And as a proud alum, I I have to you know. I have to play the role, right? I'm happy to be the bad guy. So here I am. Cody Del Mendo's oh, here. Oh, man. <laughs> As you can tell, he's not happy about it. And I, really, I, Ryan, we should have put you in the middle. Maybe. I mean, we probably should have flipped these I, two I, seats. I kind of so might have like a Zambrano Barrett just situation. Just so we don't here. get our yeah. first, you know, Tim Doyle, but I, I don't, Kendall Gill fight in the I don't know if yeah. I'll be able to stop him. I don't know if I'll be able to stop him, and then I'm just in the middle of it if they yeah, kind of start gonna going at it. You're going to have to split it up. So. Yeah, I. I don't regret what I said. We were on Villanova minus five tonight, folks. He's the slam he's, it. He's the hammer he's the, it. The Conor McGregor. I apologize to absolutely no one. Yes, there you go. Rachel's absolutely no saying one. go blue. Rachel says go blue for you. Brendan says get me off the set. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? But in real, it's it's good fun. Oh, I McGregor. Res- I, I I respect Corey coming in here with a Michigan jersey after everything I said. It, it's like a power move. I, I respect that. I, I like, I think most people that went to Michigan am nourished by your hatred. So. <laughs> uh, let's get to the base. Well, I guess we should ask first, how was Arizona? Um, well, we saw the Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, so I had the Hawaiian shirts. I mean, tell me what you would think coming, you know, going like 11 days, 80 plus degree weather, sunny. I, you know, I got a tan. And then you come back and it's like forty degrees and raining. How would you feel? I mean, it was. I'd feel like that's exactly what you deserve. Uh, yeah. Whatever. You know, spring now. Spring, spring training. Karma is the word. I am. I'm quite tan. Look. Oh, look at me in the screen. I'm quite tan Looking today. Great. Um, <laughs> Especially next to me. You know. No, I mean, yeah, uh, spring seriously. training was great. You know, getting down there, just having baseball back is awesome. But uh, yeah. you know, being able to really kind of get back into the into the grind of a season is just what I looked forward to. What I looked forward to when I took this job, and we didn't know when baseball was going to come back, and now that it's back, and I can really get back into that side of things. It's it's uh, it's well, not not replacing that. I got one question for you then: of of the guys that you saw there, who should Cubs fans be like, hey, that's the guy? Well, like, who really impressed you in the couple days where you just saw him doing whatever, and you were like, hmm, he's going to be a big league player. He's really good. I mean, this is the easiest one, but Seiya Suzuki <laughs> was. I mean. Just in general, like you, yeah, you guys watched that press conference. Like he, you know, he's talking to his translator, but you could already tell that personality. And even talking to the guys uh, on the, the, you know, the teammates are saying like just talking to him those few, first few days, like they could tell like he's very like his personality is great. He likes to have fun, and even though he's coming to a completely different country, different culture, like they they know that he's going to be able to like kind of fit in because of just the way his personality is. But the first time we, we watched him, he went out on the Sloan Park. So they have, like, the backfields and they have the practice fields and stuff. But then, they, you know, they have actual Sloan Park where they play the games. He took BP uh, at Sloan Park, and I swear that swing just looked so effortless. And he Which looked, is rare for a right-handed yeah, swing, Yeah, right? and he was just mm. taking him out of the park. Like, he was cranking him. And you're like – and then you look back, and I had that video. I'm like, was he even swinging? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, you, you look at it and some of those swings just look effortless and all of a sudden, but like, you don't see it in my video, but I know, like I saw a bunch of those go out, go out of the park. So I'm like, he, he seems like the real deal. I, you, you never really can project how, um, you know, people or players coming from NPB will actually perform. And obviously that you've seen the ups and downs from different players, but I have a question for yeah. Okay. Here's Joey's question. 
Who filmed the Justin Steele interview? So that's, that's a great uh, question. Ryan doesn't have a crew. Uh, <laughs> no, we actually uh, were able to get one of the. So he asked who filmed the Justin Steele interview. We were able to get one of our uh, one of our, our guys down at PHNX. Uh, his name is Jacob Franklin. Nice. Stepped up, you know, brought the camera out there, got in, was able to set it up, and we got the Justin Steele interview. He came the next day, actually, too, like the next morning. We didn't end up getting anything, but. You know, he was there and he stepped up and and you know that's our that's our uh, that's our brother I, company right there. Yeah, I love the way you guys each grabbed a microphone like you were going to karaoke oh, during yeah. the interview or something. Like, oh. very comfortable. <laughs> they were going to duet during the yeah, interview. Yeah, I didn't no, know what was I mean, going to happen. I got you, babe, like back and forth. <laughs> no, that was my first on-screen <laughs> interview, so I think it went well. And Rachel, as she said yesterday, she said I killed it. So or two days ago, whatever day it was, it was very good. she said I killed it. So I got. I will say this: Rachel is one of the most positive people on our feed. There, oh, there's no sometimes doubt. a little negativity. Mm. Rachel brings a positivity to our show that I appreciate. Yeah, I agree. She's very positive on uh, Twitter, too, which is very rare from anyone on Cubs Twitter, honestly. <laughs> especially lately. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one of the guys that's uh, drawing a little bit of interest, you mentioned Suzuki on the other side of the field. on left. In left, we're talking about Clint Frazier. And, you know, I think a lot of people saw the double yesterday in the Cactus League game. Mm-hmm. We're like, huh. Okay, uh, let's just talk about him a little, a little bit, and and where we see him fitting into this team. Um, Gordon Wittenmeyer, uh, NBC Sports Chicago, did an interview with him about his concussions, which we now know he had two concussions, one of which he never told the Yankees about, um, which is interesting. Says he's feeling better, and obviously that could have completely derailed what was a really hot prospect at the time. Um, and, and you mentioned before we went on the show, where, where do you think he fits into this team? You, you, do you think there's a chance maybe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there's a chance that he could not be on the team if, if it doesn't go well. Well, the Cubs just have, uh, a lot of decisions to make there. It's a crowded outfield. Um, it's a crowded positional group really as a whole, um, other than like catcher is pretty stable. It's Wilson Contreras and Jan Gomes. Other than that, like there's a lot of variability and they're going to have to decide, you know, the guys that have options, I believe Clint Frazier still has an option. Um, so he's not one of the guys that absolutely has to break camp with the team and they're just going to have to make a lot of close decisions. This is where like, We talk a lot about, like, how often is Jason Hayward playing? When is Seiya Suzuki commanding right field on an everyday basis? Is Ian Happ looked at as an everyday kind of guy hitting lefties and righties? They're going to have to answer those questions, and that's going to affect guys like Hermosillo, Clint Frazier, um, Harold Ramirez, who, you know, is in Cubs camp now. They're going to have to decide. But, you know, you look at, like, what Clint did yesterday, like, you see the you see what everyone's looking for the power the bat speed the quickness like it's easy to dream on i w- i feel like frazier and hap would have the highest ceilings of that group i could be wrong but when you just look at him i mean you're talking about a guy that was a top prospect for the yankees you're talking about hap a first rounder who has they both have shown that at times they can be really really good at the major league level and they both have had struggles now, maybe you could say Frazier's came from the injuries and the concussions, which are, are a serious thing, but I feel like his ceiling could be really, really high compared to some of the other guys. I'm not – do you guys agree with that? How do you, how do you see the situation? Uh, well, Suzuki, I mean, his ceiling's super high. Sure, too. I mean, in left – I'm talking left, just specifically oh. left field now. Like, let's say okay. Suzuki has locked down right field okay. and Hayward's taking some in center and maybe Brennan Davis takes center – in left, now you're left, you'd be left with Frazier, Hap, Hermosillo. Alfonso Rivas has is, is, is played the outfield, A good too. spring, yeah. too. Rivas. And he's been playing well. I mean, I feel like the Cubs probably going into spring were thinking Hap and, you know, and Frazier were going to be the, the guys, I guess, platooning or being part of this. Of course, coming into the spring, they didn't have Suzuki yet, so mm-hmm. in my eyes – Going into spring, you're like, okay, Frazier, Hap, this is not great if it's going to be both of them in the corner outfield. But with both of them now most likely going to be sharing left, I mean, I there's definitely have the highest ceiling of, of the rest. I, you know, I've already said my two cents about Hermosillo on this show. Mm-hmm. I'm high on him, but I think he's more of center field. 
Um, I, I don't think we see much of him in the corner outfield. But, yeah, I mean, Frazier's been, you know, when they signed him before the lockout, I thought it was like one of those, like, uh, I guess high risk, but – or what is it? Uh, low risk, high reward. Low risk, yeah, low yeah, risk, high risk. reward. There you go. Come on, you're the gambling guy. Yeah, you're I'm supposed to, to know this shit. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, low risk, high reward, guys. I mean, you're not. they're not paying him anything. There's no reason really that, in my eyes, that he shouldn't make it out of camp at least. I think he deserves a chance. I mean, it's very clear they didn't, that he didn't like being on the Yankees. So you put him in a change of scenery. You put him on a team that he actually wants to go out and try and play and – and be a part of and, and give him consistent at bats, maybe you finally get that potential. And he's only twenty six still. Like yeah. you know the the thing for me is like and this is like a separate debate and not to make it like all about like Hayward's playing time or anything, but like Frazier's one of those guys where I really hope he makes the team and gets a shot to play, maybe not every day, but in whatever matchups they feel he can be the most successful because as Cody said, like he's a young guy. He's a, a former only top prospect. Only 27 still. Right. Yeah. And, like, you know, it, how you want to view the 2020 season, whatever. But, like, you know, 149 WRC plus in the 2020 season. Kind of saw it a little bit there. Maybe the lack of fans or anything. Maybe that helped him out a little bit playing for the Yankees. But, like, if he is that guy, if he looks like a former top prospect and kind of starts to inch toward that ceiling, that's a big deal. For the Cubs. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about, like, the next great Cubs team? The thing that speeds that up is 26, 27-year-olds hitting their ceiling and being arbitration-paid players. That's what speeds that up. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, when, when you think about left field, again, going back to what I, I think I came, or Rossi said it a couple weeks ago, maybe, that you know, with Hap with the elbow, that he, you know, there might have a few more days off in left field, a few more days where he's just DHing or whatever. Maybe get him out of the lineup, get him, get him off his feet or whatever. But we don't know yet what the, what the elbow is going to be on April seventh, and even just the weeks after that, he looks he looks better. He played in the field the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, but Frazier, that could be an opportunity for Frazier to take more time in left field, get more consistent at bats and more consistent reps out in left field, start to really build that back. If he's feeling, you know, like he said, he's feeling better, kind of feeling past the issues that with the concussion issues that hampered him last year. Um, and again, just with the DH in general, coming to the National League, there's going to be so many different opportunities. And, I, it, you know, David Ross kind of made it clear, like, they're not looking for, like, an everyday David Ortiz-style DH at this point. Like, they're going to be shuffling a lot of what they do with the roster. And so that could be another avenue where they want to, they want to have out, out in the outfield, put Clint Frazier at DH. You know, give him, give him some at-bats, give him consistent at-bats. And that's just another way that – if he's truly over, you know, those – or feeling good, feeling good, feeling better than what he did last year, which he kept quiet, then that's just another avenue that Clint Frazier can start to kind of climb back up to that potential that was a, a fifth overall pick in 2013, right three spots behind Bryant. Like, that's yeah. – if he can get close to that potential, that's – That is there, yeah. 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 I mean, and I, I love the point about the DH because I guess I didn't really – wasn't really thinking of that whenever I was talking. But, yeah, you could put Hap out there one day, say it's – uh a right-handed pitcher, and you obviously Hap is better again as a, from the left side of the plate than he is the right. You know, then you but if you want to put Frazier in there too, like the Cubs, obviously they they still lack significant power. Like people will shut up about that if Clint Frazier like <laughs> finds his own, comes into his own with the Cubs. Robbie Lopez is on board. Says he's going to have a huge season. Now he's had two concussions in four seasons. He hasn't played since June 30th of 2021. He called it, in the interview, uh, fighting for his life. Mm -hmm. He said it was basically like having a hangover every day, except I felt slowed down one step behind. And I don't think people really understand what it's like until you experience, experience it yourself. People would say, oh, he's just having a headache. No, your quality of life is certainly hindered whenever you go through a, a brain injury. Totally understand that. you know. And I, I think people that have concussions – and multiple concussions don't ever know whether or not they're fully healed. You know, they don't know if the next one's coming sooner because it's now it's easier to get that the next concussion after that. I do know that he is a guy that has, from what we've heard, a little bit of a swagger to him. Yeah, yep. when you go on game. when you <laughs> yeah, when you allegedly game. ask for Mickey Mantle's number when you get to the Yankees, <laughs> you've got a little swagger behind you, right? Yeah. Um. So I don't know. 
exactly what went wrong. I don't know if the concussions were the only thing that happened. I just think there's an there's an upside there that again, that's why I think the DH is good for the Cubs. Not be, I wasn't on board with it before, but this team specifically it's good for because of getting extra at bats for extra guys. You're trying to find out as much as you can about this team and these players as you can early in the season and start to develop a plan with them. The DH allows you to do more of that. Mm-hmm. We, we don't need to see as much as I'd like to see Stroman bat maybe once <laughs> just to see what he does. I also don't need him to get hit by a pitch. Right. So yeah. mm-hmm. put these other guys out there, get them at bats, and, and let's see what we've got. And I think Frazier's a perfect candidate for what the Cubs are trying to do this season. Yeah, I like that because, you know, Jed Hoyer, and he's said it multiple times since spring training started, but it's like the next great Cubs team. You know, he's been trying to build the next great Cubs team. The way this roster is constructed – very likely it's not this year, like this year, this right. is not it. But there are a bunch of pieces on this team that when that next great Cubs team, you know, is here, then a lot of these guys, there could be pieces of that. But won't they be the stars? Maybe not, but they could be serviceable players that help that Cubs team be the next great Cubs team and compete again. Well, and this is a good, like, of course it's not where we want the team to be, but for guys like Frazier, especially, you know, coming off these very serious health issues – the the lower stakes perhaps and and the ability to move around the lineup or different positions maybe that's beneficial to these guys you know I can see playing for the New York Yankees being a top prospect dealing with very serious health issues that's a lot to deal with when you're trying to make adjustments and become a, a better player and perhaps the lower stakes of this Cubs season and the ability to just get in there at DH every now and again is a way for someone like this to sort of just like take out the outside stuff and, and focus on baseball. I'd be remiss because we're talking about him to mention my guy, Brendan, who was on the show yesterday, points out that his career chase rate is better than 97% of Major League Baseball. Um, and he, you know, sort of goes on that he hasn't played too much, so it's not that many plate appearances. But the long and short of it is he doesn't swing at bad pitches. And when he makes contact, which is key for several Cubs players, he smokes it, like Cody said. Like, if you're looking for power, if Clint Frazier can put it together, he will provide the power at Wrigley Field. And again, I mean, I truly believe in change of scenery. Like, this guy, I think he sent a tweet, like, was it shortly after he signed with the Cubs? Yeah, he got kind of flamed by Yankees Twitter. Yeah, like, yeah. Yankees Twitter came after him because he was just happy to not be on the Yankees. Like, fresh start. I, I'm, again, big believer in change of scenery. See what happens. I'm not saying he's going to turn into an MVP caliber player, but if we can get just like some sort of production that we're like, hey, we, we maybe this guy's part of the future, then you're like, this was a great move. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the DH also comes into play a little bit when you, you want him to try to get that bat underneath him again, like get, get those swings, get those reps, and be a, a productive hitter again while also being able to, you know, limit – the chances that he runs into the brick wall in left field, which right. is like a big yeah. thing. And, you know, and he's I'll, aware of that. Like, yeah, he's he aware was, of it. You know, he said yeah. that. He said that he's aware of it. But well, that's like, how he got the second concussion was running into a wall. He was running into a wall, so he running into brick. That ivy, that ivy is not a no. protective cover for that brick. Like that, that hurts. That'll hurt right. if he is. So, Especially in April. So that <laughs> DH spot is going to be helpful in, you know, limiting those opportunities and letting him focus on, you know, hitting and, and getting that bat back and, mm-hmm. you know, being productive as a hitter. And then, you know, if he's you know, truly over the things or, or you know, over the, the, the symptoms, the concussion symptoms and stuff, getting him in left field, you know, make, having him, you know, kind of switching him in, in half out, in and out of the, not in and out of the lineup, in and out of the field will be, will be beneficial in the long run. Uh, Stephen W. on our chat was, seemed a little bit less optimistic and he's like, interesting valuing Clint over Castellanos when we're still 60 million under the cap. So again, the. The finances come into oh. play here, which is a perfect segue into our next. I mean, the guy's not wrong. Point. He's not no, wrong. No, he's not. We'd prefer they be spending more money. Yeah. Like, I, I assume that's clear at this point. I'm like, always willing to spend somebody else's yeah, I, money. We would love oh, for yeah. them to have a four hundred million dollar payroll. Right. Like, I know. would have. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so it, Forbes put out their list of evaluating what teams are worth for 2022. The Cubs, according to Forbes, now worth. Three point eight billion, up thirteen percent from last year, and the fourth most valuable franchise in all of Major League Baseball. You see the other ones up there: the Yankees, six billion; the Dodgers, 
right around four billion. The Red Sox just under four billion at three point nine billion, and then the Cubs with the Ricketts at three point eight billion. Now the interesting part of going into that article at Forbes is that the Yankees are at six billion, but their operating loss last year, according to Forbes, was forty million. The Dodgers operating loss was eight million. The Red Sox operating income was sixty nine million, and the Cubs had an operating income of sixty eight million. The the Cardinals, by the way, seventh on the list at two point four five billion with an operating loss of thirty four million. Well, but they still get all those comp picks. But they yeah, still get all those picks. Like what a joke. There, there's a lot of. I mean, <laughs> the finance thing again. When those numbers come in, we've talked about it multiple times this week, and. I know it was another hot topic today because the bid for the Chelsea club is the number of names is starting to shrink and the Ricketts are still on the list. And apparently there's been some pushback from people about that. Um, Mostly it sounds like because of the father, Joe Ricketts, Ricketts. a lot of his comments. Um, Cubs fans, though, are concerned about it. I'll speak on their behalf. They're concerned about it because they see that the Cubs aren't spending to the top, even though they're one of the most valuable franchises. And they're worried that if they buy a soccer club, they're going to spend even less money on a current roster. Now, where have we seen this before? Like, I think there's a guy who owns the Bulls and the White Sox, and Chicagoans have been yelling about where he spends more money on each one every year. I think we just heard it on the Sox podcast, which was right before <laughs> ours, slightly uh, slightly upset about some guys that were not signed. Um, again, I would say that, They've had a tough PR week. <laughs> tough. It's, it's been a tough PR week, and that when these stats come out, it just brings up the same conversation, uh, kind of the buzz around, why didn't we sign this guy? Why didn't we sign this guy? In their defense, I will say they've greatly outspent the rent, rest of the division, right? Yeah. Yeah. I greatly think, outspent the division. Yeah. I think that... There's there, that, isn't there? One, I think the Joey's one... Joey's not impressed. The <laughs> one reason I feel like that maybe they didn't... Yeah, try so Pirates. hard was just because or try so hard at some of those bigger names was because they just didn't feel like even if they did sign those that they were going to be able to you know be a or a real contender anyway I know that's not what anyone wants to hear I know that's not even really that great of an excuse but like I don't know I think they really value the the prospects and stuff and I do and if and if they really didn't do this like if they really believed in not spending more I'd I think they believe that they're coming faster than what many people believe. I'm not defending the organization. I, I'm not defending Jed. I'm just saying that, like, like that to me, that that's the only explainable thing, I guess, in a way. I, I think you had it right the other day. On I, I know you had a, a tweet that, you know, I think you said you had to mute the I had the to mute the notifications, <laughs> yes. It's, it, it, it's, 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 I understand why it riles people up, it riles me up, and it's, I think a lot of it is just the optics of it, right? Mm-hmm. You can go through and look at where they've ranked in payroll since the last rebuild ended, like 2015 on, they were very frequently in the top five, sometimes in the top you know, three or higher, yeah. and in some of those seasons, it didn't work. They had a very high payroll in some of those years, and they didn't make the playoffs in 2019, right? And they're on this process because I think Jed believes this is the best way to build long-term sustainable success. Now, we were also sold that the first rebuild, that we wouldn't have to do this again, but sometimes things don't work out. The optics of it, though, is everybody that goes to Cubs games pays the highest prices for a game day experience in baseball, right? We're talking today about the team being worth top five in baseball. The family is in Europe trying to buy an extremely expensive multi-billion dollar soccer franchise. So when the Cubs are 15th in Major League Payroll this year, it doesn't really matter to most people if there's a logical, (laughs) process-driven baseball answer. They're saying, I'm paying all this money, you're making all this money, and Fangraph says this is a 75-win team. Make it make sense to me, right? (laughs) Right. That's all they want to hear. And and logic don't always go hand in hand. I don't think think it's the opposite. I think they almost never go hand in hand. (laughs) But I I like you said optics. I mean, optics is like, that's like the key word, right? It's like, yeah, what what was it that Jed said last year? like, he could rest his head on his pillow knowing that he Mm -hmm. put his best foot forward. I think he can say the same thing now. They ponied up for Marcus Stroman. They ponied up. They got Seiya Suzuki, who was, like, the biggest 
one of the biggest free agents just in general, not even just internationally, in general this year. Got him, you know, got him to Chicago. I mean, he's they've spent money and but they're also not spending it like free willy, like they're just trying to right throw together a team and try to win a championship. They're not doing that. And that's why I think I think Jed Hoyer again can put his rest his head on his pillow every night knowing he's doing what he thinks is best. But then the optics say, yeah, you still, have, but you still have sixty million dollars under until you right, get the competitive balance Right, but he knows how much tag. he can spend. But, he knows what the number but, is. But but that's what I'm saying. It's like the optics yeah. of people sitting out there that are criticizing. It's like, oh, why well, you know you have sixty million more you can spend that until you hit that competitive balance tax. Right. Jed Hoyer probably has you know again like you said he he knows how much he can spend, but he also knows, I think what he's you know trying to build and. Again, optics will make it sound make it makes it look very bad, but I think Jed Hoyer also, in his mind has just the idea of what he wants to do, and he's doing it right now. It also doesn't help that you know obviously there there was the pandemic, which I think provides them a bit of cover. But they stopped speaking at Cubs convention, right? Yeah, we we don't hear from him other than you know, and I think you've brought this up before that interview on Marquee after the trade deadline. Right, we're gonna have the money, we're gonna spend, and they they did like technically, right? Right. But I think when you say stuff like that and, and like I've got a bunch of letters, uh, you know, the season ticket holder, <laughs> preseason letters that, you know, often make some promises that in a lot of the years I feel like I can look them in the eye and say, yeah, they delivered on this, whether the team performs that level or not. Right now, though, like, are they delivering on the sort of organizational speak that they go through? You know, maybe not, and they don't talk to anybody anymore. They dodge yeah. everybody at the Cubs. Con, yeah, so. but you're, you're still gonna you're still gonna re up your season tickets though. Right? I have them. It's too late. <laughs> I told <laughs> you. I'm, I told you. Like I say all this stuff, but I'm like the biggest mark of them all, right? Like I, I just I love having them. You're I never, love going to Wrigley Field. Yeah, so never, they've got never, me. They, you know, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> you're right? never gonna right. give them up. Though. Did you see the comment from Ferris earlier? It was like uh, a couple down. A uh, uh, he's talking about whether. Is owning a baseball team a privilege and a and a hobby for billionaires, or is it an opportunity to make money as a business? That's an interesting, like philosophical question about what we expect from owners of major league franchises, right? Like, yeah, um, it, and it plays into what Jock Peterson, what we talked about yesterday. Like, uh, I think there should be an expectation in that in. Part of it is a privilege, and you should have to spend more than $30 million if you're going to compete in the league, even though spending money doesn't necessarily always equal winning. Yeah. But when you're spending that much less than the rest and we can see your roster, we know you're not trying to win at all. So there is something to be said about it being a privilege and you need to treat it a certain way. I can't argue with the last part. That's also true. It is it is a business where they're trying to make money, and right. clearly, I I get that too. Like, you don't invest, you don't get to be a billionaire without not knowing how to make how to money. Make money, yeah. Right. Well, then it's also, but that extends to any, and how to I, and how to keep that money. That extends to all the pro sports. Like, there's there are, there are owners out there like the Mark Cubans of the world that really want to win, and they're not going to you know operate in the red all year, every year to make that happen. They, they'll they'll do what they can to try to put a winner together, and there's owners that don't do that and want to you know, squeeze out as much profit as they can. And, and if they win a World Series or win a NBA title or win a Super Bowl that, while doing that, you know, that's good. I mean, but to spin zone for Cubs fans who just think that Ricketts doesn't want the Cubs to win, it's like you can look at the Bears, like, oh. yikes. Um, the White Sox are in a winning window when the big, b- biggest move they've made this offseason is Josh Harrison, Joe Kelly. Like, they, those guys are yelling about how they still don't have Conforto. And then the Bulls, until they brought in their new front office after they finally, I guess not they, but John Paxson finally said, I'm tired of this. Like, that was bad for like 10 years. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not a hockey guy, so I can't say too much about the Blackhawks, but they're, they're, in the, they're maybe uh, the biggest mess of them. Yeah, they're in the yeah. biggest mess of the, of the city right now. Like, so when I think of it from just Chicago in general, I think at least from an organizational standpoint of like being in a mess, quote unquote, like, I'd at least put the Cubs somewhere there in the middle. Like, I think I I do think Ricketts cares about the team in terms of winning because, like, if they don't win games or at least aren't competitive, like, the Wrigley Field experience only goes so far, especially now after winning in 16. You know, beforehand, it was never really about those, like, kind of like what, what you said on why you still have your season tickets. But not everyone is you, right? Right. Like, you know, when I before 16, like, I remember going to games – 
and 13 and 14. And just like, you know, I knew there was up and coming guys, but I, you know, I was just happy to be at Wrigley field. The, they definitely have set the standard for what fans expect. And they have repeated that. They know that that's a thing. And I know that's just them talking. It does, you have to action speak louder than words, but at the same time, I, you know, Again, kind of back to what I was saying, like I, I do think that they believe that what's going on in the farm system and, and other things is coming sooner than, than people really think. When we saw last year that the numbers dropped off, like I, I'm not sure, you know, post COVID and all this stuff, it's hard to predict this stuff. But after the deadline, I was there, you know, a handful of times. I, I didn't go every night either. But like there were games where they played the attendance game on the video board in left field and it was 23,000, 22,000. Like, that's not a full ballpark. No, like, when they no. signaled this team is not competitive anymore, a lot of fans said, got it. But like, that's that, see, oh, there that, was plenty you know, of that graphic from Forbes showed that they still made money. Well, so that's the thing. Like, do they care? Right? Like, well, but I, 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 there are, there's a difference between an owner that doesn't care at all. Like, they're Cubs fans. I believe that. Each, each member of the Ricketts family that's involved, Cubs fans. So they'd like to see the team win. It's it's not like the Tribune owning the Cubs, where like they they could care less what what happened because it's it's a newspaper, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. a media company. Like why would they care what happens other than the financials of it back and forth? Is there a a pulse, a, a Cubs pulse inside the Ricketts family? Yes, there is. You can't you can't deny it. They're Cubs fans. Um, so it, to say they don't care about winning, I think is going too far which twitter does sometimes yeah well and we <laughs> also say, saw Luke. like in like i'm i'm obviously not a particularly successful businessman like they are but like you look at 2015 and 2016 if i were a business fan like the money is there you right. make the playoffs you sell out all those games i mean the days after they won the world series wrigleyville sports all those stores mopped lines out the door oh, yeah. you can sell merch and all that stuff for I mean, months. So, like, that's what I would be doing. You, you, sell, you, give the you can sell merch, but can you sell dope merch? Mm. Only you can, Luke. Only, only, only CHGO only can sell you the dope merch. Question. Let's be honest about that. So, anyways, I, it, it's funny how often it comes up. It's like three times a week, some story comes up where, like, well, that was a rough PR day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, that's a tough it's, look. It's like, oh, like, over the years, it's like anything comes up that's about Ricketts spending any money that's not going towards the Cubs payroll, yeah. and then they're like, well, why aren't you buying this yeah. guy? I mean, kind of like what he was saying was, you know, they invested all this money around the ballpark. You know, I don't have a problem with, like, the restaurants and stuff, but did you really need the hotel? They don't, I don't think they needed the hotel. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I got, the bar in there is pretty nice. If you want to grab a drink? I, I mean, Swift and I looked online right. to see how much a dang room in that place is. Like, I ain't staying there anytime mm. soon, folks. But you know, I'm just saying. Like, they, I, wouldn't majority of that blame blame go on Crane Kenny? Like, like who else can we blame there? Like that. I think he. They should have. They don't talk about. about him enough in the blame of this. It's just all records because he's the one who has the. Has the money and everything. They should have cut the Taco Bells. That's I'm gonna oh, leave it at that. That was a legendary spot, man. So I agree. <laughs> they have a new one. Well, yeah, that, yeah, but it's not. New one, it's right? not. It doesn't. Not, it doesn't have the character. It doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't yeah. smell yeah. of urine like it, the other one did. It doesn't hit <laughs> you know? like the OG. Taco. Give it time. Mm. Give it time. <laughs> uh, Bob's really upset. He says Ricketts are all about the money. Don't get me started. <laughs> so I'm not even going to read the rest of it because I, I, that pretty much should sum up what what he's saying there. Um. All right, let's take a quick break and uh, talk about our sponsors who are really helping us out, and uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, well, like we were saying earlier, I'm I'm high on uh, Villanova minus five tonight, and you can place that bet over at PointsBet, <laughs> which the best way to support CHGO is to go download the PointsBet app and use the code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you'll get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO locker, all for making a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. And if you if Villanova minus five hits tonight, you'll also make some money, and Corey will be sad. <laughs> Just saying. If you have any questions, you can email pointsbet 
at allchgo.com and we'll help you out. Your home for live in play betting just got even better. Introducing Points Bets, new feature live college basketball same game parlay. For the first time ever, you can build the perfect live same game parlay only with Points Bet. Combine your favorite bets anytime during the day. Want more? You can boost your live same game parlays. Watch live, parlay live, and boost live with Points Bet. And now, online sign-up is available in Illinois. You can download the PointsBet app right now and register your account from start to finish, all from your phone. Luke did it. I promise. I keep saying it every, every day that I do this ad read. So, uh, <laughs> again, it's that easy. 5909 in my account. <laughs> if you want your, want your live example. <laughs> yeah, Luke is a example, live example, right folks. Uh, plus, during PointsBet Match Madness, all users can earn up to $100 in free bets. During each round, just place a $50 pregame wager and get a $50 or get a free $20 live bet to be used for that round. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Fellas, our next partner has a product that I've been using literally every day. Started taking AG1 because I didn't have time, wanted better gut health, more energy, and an optimized immune system. And now I've been on it for about... Uh, two and a half weeks or so. I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy, but it is. It's kind of a mild taste, tropical taste. I actually look forward to taking it in the morning. So what is this stuff? That's Corey's been asking me. What is this stuff that has you just bouncing off the walls with energy? And I said, oh, it's just one scoop of AG1. You're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. A special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all key things in my life. I get a noticeable boost of energy, so it's the first thing I do in the morning on an empty stomach and giddy up, there I go. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you take keto, paleo, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, Aaron Rodgers, they're all good, AG1. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance for less than three, I said it, three bucks a day. It's recommended by professional athletes. It has more than 7,000 five-star reviews. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for millions of different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, and then also five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash C-H-G-O Cubs. Again, that's athleticgreens.com backslash C-H-G-O Cubs to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. If your guys aren't doing it, we got free samples of it. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've 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 had it a few times. The real I deal. Get, I need to get consistent with it. That's my problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've had it. I've missed all of Luke's uh, ad reads about it. So like now that now how much that you more talk energy about it, do I have since when oh. you left and I was like down in the dumps? It's clear. Plenty. Dragging my feet around the building. <laughs> I got in my AG1. You go come back from Arizona. You're like, who's that guy? <laughs> now that you talk about it, now I like Grandpa I'm kind who? of I'm intrigued. Yeah, Grandpa yeah. who? I'm intrigued. Yeah. About right, start respect your elders around here. <laughs> he's yelling like a young whippersnapper now. He's uh, in the yard yelling no, again, guys. No. You know, I've seen some of the chat going through, and I I saw uh, again. I think it was Ferris pointing out that they said they're going to be competitive, and to him that means a 500 team. And we're going to start kind of breaking down the one way to get there is to be competitive in your division, and we're going to start breaking down each position and where the Cubs rank at that position within the Central Division. So we're going to start with the starting rotation because it's all about pitching sometimes. And we're going to start at the bottom with the team we've decided has the worst starting pitching in the division. I think it's pretty easy to say it's the Pirates. Uh, You would think they're going to be the worst team in the division. And you look at their, their rotation, it's Jose Quintana, who apparently is not going to be the opening day starter. I was reading some stuff, and it looked like the expectation might be 
Mitch Keller Mitch or Keller. JT Brubaker. Brubaker. So, and Mitch Keller, I think, was out there either today or yesterday, but pumping like 98, which I'm not sure if that was what he was doing before, but it was at least something to... Right, so he's taken to. some AG1, too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he's feeling good. How's yeah. your velocity? Is it improving your I velocity? I haven't thrown... A, I mean, I have a bad shoulder, so maybe that'll yes. help with the AG1, but <laughs> I haven't thrown a ball in a long time, and I don't plan to ever throw one again. Excuses. Um, yeah, but Brew Baker was Brew Baker was five and thirteen last year with an ERA of five point three six. I know those are old school numbers. For you know, Brendan would laugh and scoff at those and probably lift his nose a little bit. The pitch doctor, yeah. that's not good. Yeah, that's not good, and that that's your opening day starter. So maybe they have a couple promising guys on there. They're certainly not as good as the Cubs, right? The worst in the division. Oh. Even if they peak with Brew Baker or Keller. Or Whoever having a great season, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah I mean, Mitch <laughs> Keller is your like best, which I think he will be out of that group. Like maybe Ru Baker makes the push, but I think Keller, like you said, is pumping ninety eight. Like that's pretty good. And but if he's like, he shouldn't be the ace on a roster. I don't think he could be a solid starter, maybe, but he shouldn't be a team's ace. So if you ha- if he's ends up being your ace, or if Ru Baker ends up being your ace, I don't think you're going to be winning any World Series that I'm just going to tell y'all, if the Cubs lineup gets carved up by Jose Quintana, I'm going to be <laughs> inconsolable on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. I, I, he was not... Litig- relitigating that trade is not something we have to do. I think it, like, in large part made sense at the time <laughs> if he was it. that player. <laughs> Agreed. We don't have to do that every time. But should have been over Verlander. time, he just... Especially guys that throw, like, only a couple pitches, doesn't have the velocity, just not my... Not my kind of pitcher to watch. So if the Cubs can't figure him out, I'm going to be very annoyed. He wasn't very good with the Angels last year either. No. So, like, he's coming into Pittsburgh kind of like, yikes. I mean, kind of smart of him to come back to the NL Central because, like, the American League is – it's no, it's not easy no matter where you go. He's coming to probably – probably one could argue the, the worst division in the NL. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when I think of Mitch Keller, I just think of – him getting mad at Tim Anderson for flipping his bat. So that, that's what I got for you on that. Is that him? I thought that was him. I thought it was a something Keller. I want to say it was him. Might have been Kyle Brendan Keller. has chimed in, by the way. I'm quitting the podcast if Q shoves against the Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just going to say, they don't have anybody that shoves in their rotation. They, yeah, they shouldn't, no, yeah. They shouldn't. And I mean, the, the, I think the Cubs have done pretty well against Pirates pitching in, in years past. So hopefully nothing frustrating there for us. Take advantage of your games against the Pirates. Yes, All right, exactly. so. Yeah. There are, it's like there are, I'm not saying like any of these, I don't know if they jump off the page, but there's like, just on their page right now, are like uh-huh. seven starters on the MLB.com Pirates page. Seven starters on their depth charts. I'm like, I don't think they know what the rotation is no. going to look like, so. It'll be their rotation is like left field for the Cubs. They have no idea. It'll be interesting moves. to see what they have a that couple looks nice like. position players, but the, the when it comes to pitching, it's just very much like I have no idea what they're what they think that they're going to be able to do with that. All right, so Pirates worst in the division starting pitching. We go up the ladder one, and it's the Reds. We think you know Luis Castillo shoulder soreness now questionable for opening day. Clearly their ace, and uh, he's been. He's been durable since 2018. He's one of four pitchers that have made 108 starts around Major League Baseball. So I, I would think that means he's going to be bouncing back, you would figure. But after Castillo, what are you looking at with the Reds? Not much. Um, they definitely took a step back with Sonny Gray being gone. Yep, I like gone. I mean, he, Sonny Gray's a solid pitcher. Uh, where did he get, get traded to? It was Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, so Sonny Gray, I mean, Minnesota's rotation should take a step up with Sonny Gray. The Reds should take a step back. There is one guy that intrigues me. He's Vladimir Gutierrez. He, uh, he's, he's, he, he, he was a rookie last year, yeah. and he came up. He, he came up. It was actually that game, if you remember, um, when it was really windy in Wrigley, like end of May, and Bodie managed to hit that one. It was like so windy, and Bodie hit that one home run. It like mm-hmm. barely snuck over left field. That was Vladimir Gutierrez's first start. Um, okay. And he had I mean, his five solid innings outside of that home run, and he had a few other starts throughout the year that, like, he intrigues you. Obviously, he had his rookie struggles and stuff, but um, I mean, I think that's a guy that I, I know. I covered the Reds a few times, and David Bell was really high on Vladdy, uh, Vladdy Gutierrez, and you know, saying like this guy, this is a guy that can be a solid starter for us going forward. And um, so, yeah, so if he takes that, if he has a sophomore slump or he takes a second year jump, that he could be a very solid pitcher in that rotation. And I mean, if he, I mean, it happens with the Cubs that whoever they face tends to just be. <laughs> just beat them a lot, but um, 
you know, I, I think he could be a solid pitcher in that rotation, but they're like just question marks, especially you, they don't have a lot of. You mentioned you stars. covered the the Reds a, for a couple games, right? But I'm uh, I'm interested to see how they use uh, Hunter Green, like if he's going to be on the opening day roster or not. It's a top draft pick yeah. from the Reds a few years ago. Uh, I'm uh, like he he has a high ceiling, no doubt, but I just don't know enough about him to say that that's going to put the Reds over the the Cubs. At oh, least it's not over the so they're not over the Cubs. I don't <laughs> care if a bunch of guys pitch well. They they may you know Pakota rankings and all those say that they're going to finish ahead of the Cubs, but when it comes to starting pitching. They're not ahead of the Cubs. No, they're not. I, I mean, so. the Cubs are clearly third, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, right now, it's, you know, Hendrick, Stroman, Miley. Those three give you very good to good starting pitching for your top three. We, we understand that four and five are question marks. Um, Steele was throwing today in Cactus League play. Um, you know, you go around baseball, a lot of teams are looking for a four and five. Yeah. That's yeah. not totally uncommon. So to at least say... We know who our top three are. You're a, you're a two and you're a two and a half, maybe something like that. Like rotation is one of the reasons I would say the Cubs are no worse than third in the division. Yeah, even I, if other guys struggle, I at would positions. add um, just on on the Reds. Tyler Maley probably going to be oh, yeah. their opening day starter. Uh, just so we didn't you know skip him or anything. But still not the Cubs. No, right? no, uh, there, there's, I can't compare the. The Reds pitching to the Cubs no, starting pitching. Yeah, but, you know, a couple years, two years, yes. ERA and FIP both under four. So, Maley's good, but with Castillo, you know, we'll see what He tried to trade him. Castillo, man. Right, like, yeah. And who, right, who knows if he's even on the team. Who, right, by the end they're still in sell-off mode, so we'll see who even remains. I would love Castillo to get Castillo had that Castillo run the at, the, at, the, at the first couple months of last season where he was like, I think he was giving it more home runs than Kyle yeah. Hendricks. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, that was a lot. He finished the season strong. Runs. ERA was really yeah. bad. Finished the season stronger, but, like, you never know, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, He's got the stuff. But going back onto the Cubs, it's kind of funny that I I said talked about the Reds taking a step back without Sonny Gray. I forgot that Wade Miley was on the Reds, right. even though I just talked to him a few days ago. Some traction there, too. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's, that's I mean, that's a loss for that rotation. Solid lefty. I don't have his numbers right in front of me. Let me grab him real quick. What was he last year with the Reds? No, but I mean, if you three, three, last, 12 and seven, three, three, seven ERA. I mean, through 163 innings. Is so, got like, some deep Cy Young votes. It might have been like 10th or something on people's ballots, but Wade Miley was, he had a, a very good year. Well, last mentioned- year they had Miley, they had Sonny Gray, they had Castillo, and you could obviously argue their their starting pitching was better than the Cubs last year. I think that's flipped this season. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the way we've selling. done the, mm-hmm. the fifth, fourth, and third is right. I mean, Kyle Hendricks, we'll see. I mean, he always has those April struggles. That's just been a thing. So, you know, you kind of kind of wait and see if that happens again. But he, he, I mean, Stroman said yesterday he should be the opening day starter. Um, I, yeah. I'm under this. I'm under the same idea that yeah, Hendricks should probably be the opening day starter. Stroman was obviously a solid signing for him three years. I can't remember the dollars off the top of my head, but he should be very good for him. Wade Miley, I think he, I mean, he's behind, and he's admitted that like he's still ramping up, and he's a little behind schedule of uh, a few of the other pitches on the roster. Um, but he's getting there. He thinks he should be good to go. Maybe not. I don't think anyone's going to be good to go to throw six, seven innings on day one, like without having the pitch count be really low. But Wade Miley thinks he can get, he'll probably get to like five innings by the time he pitches that first time through the rotation. So he thinks he'll be ready. We talked, you talked about Justin Steele, Keegan Thompson, intriguing young guys from last year. But then you also brought in Drew Smiley brought in Daniel Norris, who are both also starting to build up and have said they were being built. They had already built themselves up before they got to camp, but you kind of got to see that. Um, other guys that can, um, you know, get fight for starts here and there. Alec Mills, David Ross said they're planning on having Alec Mills be a starter. And there's a lot of options on that. Don't rule out Al- Alzelide yet. Well, he's yeah. right, but yeah. he's hurt. He's well, not. He's, he's hurt he's, now, he's, but I mean, like, eventually. Oh, eventually. hope that he's part of the rotation uh, yeah, this I'm, season. I'm talking about, like, right, what's right. going to happen at the beginning of the season. These are all – Guys that are going to compete for not only just starts, but with most guys not going to be able to throw or probably won't throw more than five innings, maybe push six uh, at the start of the season. A lot of these guys that won't that aren't rotation pieces will still be those multi inning guys, piggybacking guys, and I think uh, you'll see that a lot with the Cubs, I believe. But I think you're going to see that a lot throughout the league anyway. Um, so that's why you know even the Cubs. I, I said something about the Pirates. The Cubs have like on the Cubs.com have like seven 
players in the rotation. But that's because there's going to be a lot of need for guys that can go out and get a spot start or guys that can come out of the bullpen for three, four innings and just kind of take things over without, you know, missing a step. But that's, again, that's the Cubs rotations up in the air as well as far as who are the five starters going to be. But then you're going to have a bunch of different options that can come in and, and piggyback or guys get hurt and they jump into the rotation. So you're going to have that with the Cubs. But I think just overall the options are ahead of, the Reds and the Pirates. I think, honestly, like when I was looking at this, I, I think there's the possibility that the Cubs are in the two slot. As I was going to say, there, you can make an argument Especially for that. like Flaherty's out, I think they said an indefinite amount of time with whatever his injury is. He's got a labrum tear. Yeah. And he has bursitis in his shoulder. And he had an oblique injury last year. And a shoulder strain. And, and a shoulder strain. And he's the guy on that like, team if someone was going to kind of like put together that top tier season, he would probably be that guy. So I think there's the potential that the Cubs are the number two in this ranking. I think they're kind of interchangeable at the moment, not knowing what you're going to get from Flaherty and like, you know, Wainwright is, is 40 old, but until he 40 stops performing, I, we just have to assume he's going to be decent. 40. You start to now say, absolutely. Okay. The risk is there. Yeah. Yeah, Even, even Greg Maddox at 40 wasn't the same. I think like, the Cubs top three, it's it's one of those groups where like the potential, kind of like the team, is there there's a high. We've seen all three of those guys, Kyle Hendricks, Wade Miley, and Marcus Stroman, all have been in Cy Young conversation. Wade Miley, again, like last year was right. maybe like tenth place votes or something like, like that. Distant but conversation, still, but still somebody was looking at him in, in that conversation. Like Kyle Hendricks, of course, twenty sixteen finished third. Marcus Stroman, a guy who can routinely find himself in these conversations. So there's a scenario, right, where the three of them, it all comes together in 2022 for the (laughs) Cubs at Wrigley Field, and they've got a really strong top three. I know, like, I think the official stance of the CHGO Cubs podcast, anybody who's on here, right, all like six or seven of us, we're all big on Justin Steele. Right, yeah. so yes. I, th- there is potential to get guys out in this Just rotation. The floor also, you know, maybe it's yeah. it's a little risky. We've talked about like the low velocity guys, so you know who knows, right? Kyle's not coming off his best year, but the potential I think is there, especially in that top three. Who on the want, Cardinals could jump up? Because I feel like they always have. Somebody. Well, well, I, I want to address <laughs> Robbie. Robbie's world oh, of sports. Yeah. He said something about after today's outing, he doesn't want steal. So I said not after today's outing. It's real quick address like spring training like you just have to matter. take what happens the the box score is such a grain of salt because I, I mean we didn't obviously have been doing the show we didn't watch he could have been throwing all curveballs today just to work on his right. curveball the batter yeah. knows what's going to come they're, right. they're going to be sitting curveball it's also this line two innings two walks two yeah, strikeouts i mean I, I don't know what i can give up any runs or he <laughs> again we he might just be working on one pitch <laughs> that's literally he could be work, yeah. i think the other day he worked he those the first start he had a couple good strikeouts on a slider and a curveball and then he was asked about his changeup. He's like, I actually didn't throw any changeups today. Like that, like that kind of thing. Like you have to take spring training like results as such a grain of salt because, it, and it's kind of it's just flipped. It's like in in the regular season, the result matters so much more than the process. In the spring training, it's all about the process, and the result really doesn't matter. I mean, a great example last year, Jock Peterson owned spring training for the Cubs, and then struggled the entire month of April, and then. You know, he had a really solid May, and and it led you know led to the Cubs getting a prospect back for him. But I mean, I mean that's just the example from a just yeah. a general standpoint. Like the spring training numbers really don't matter. Now, I will say that they do matter in a sense for certain players that are trying to earn a spot on the roster or just trying to, you know, I guess get one of those last rotation spots or whatever. From what you said about Steele, didn't sound like he had that bad of a day, at least from the box. Yeah, that, as that far as line the box is score. not going to push but him. But again, know, like, give up four home year. runs. Right. The, the yeah. thing about Steele that kind of like sets him apart from everyone else is like, this guy can throw hard too. And like, that's why I thought going into the season, if Alzale was healthy, if you put him and Steele in there with those finesse guys, like, that just gives you some versatility. Alternate them if you yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. And, Sucks that Alzale is not going to be healthy until probably, you know, late May, early June. But, like, when he comes back, at least that that changes a little bit, a little bit for the Cubs. Now, while we can argue Cubs and Cardinals maybe throughout the season, we'll see how that develops. 
Cardinals always seem to find some guy that goes out there and has a great season. Dakota like, Hudson is a guy that I know could be that guy. But yeah. there's there's no denying that the Brewers are at the top of the division when it comes to pitching. They no, might no be at the doubt. top of baseball. I don't think it's close. Really? Really? At yeah. least in the NL Central right now, it's not close. Yeah. Woodruff and Burns are. Which is why they're clearly Peralta. the favorite in the division <laughs> to win. Yeah, You've got right? two guys in that. I mean, one of them just literally did win the Cy Young. Yeah. And the right. other one could just as easily so until proven otherwise yeah they're at the top and they just will not be fun to face the brewers no they and they've proven (laughs) you know and we kind of like talked about this with maybe the cubs and if they look at run prevention as a way to win games stuff like that like the brewers have clearly found a formula and a way that works for them it's usually a top heavy roster right you don't look at their 26 man or to start the season it's now a 28 man roster Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. you don't look at it and say wow like top to bottom like the Dodgers this is crazy but they know how to get that value out of three or four starters two to three relievers like a couple you got Woodruff you got Burns you got Freddie Peralta who like I think he's like People forget that he's not a really good pitcher because of Woodruff, what Woodruff and Burns did last year. On any other but team, Freddie, yeah, Freddie Peralta is a very good pitcher. Yeah. Uh, and then you know Aaron Ashby, he's a prospect. He's a prospect. He had that really bad first start against the Cubs last yeah. year, um, but he's but a, a he's, top fifty yeah, prospect a, in baseball. Yeah, like, he's a top fifty. There's prospect a reason. For a reason. Right. Um, I mean, Adrian Hauser, I, 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 covering Brewers a few times. Like Brewers fans don't absolutely love Adrian Hauser all the time, but he does have. The ability. I mean, he's a fourth or fifth starter. Like he's, mm-hmm. if you have that as your fourth or fifth starter, I yeah. think you're not. You're doing something. They've right. just been churning out pitching. Like I feel like the Brewers are kind of like the Indians of the National League. Like they don't know how to find offense. They'll just go trade for it or sign or whatever. But when it comes to pitching, they've been able to develop it very well. I'm a whole like the way that the Cubs uh, front office has turned over since Theo left. It seems like the Cubs are kind of going in that direction. But it's going to take time to watch it play out. So, yeah. What position you guys want to do tomorrow? By the way, do we just go to bullpen, or do you want to go to a position? Well, the I think if you wanted to feed into the current conversations, the fun thing would be to talk about the catching position. I was going to say (laughs) catcher sounds like fun. Let's talk about which team in the division. All right, tomorrow we're going to do catcher. So if you've got comments for that, start thinking of the Cubs above the Cardinals, and that I'm deciding that right now. (laughs) Save it for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about our sponsors because we're so grateful for them. Yeah. All right. Um, so, Cody, uh, I'm going to try to talk about points bet as well as you do because you do it all the time and you do it so well. Thank you. Um, but if you enjoy CHGO, one way to help us continue to grow is to download the points bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. Not only are you going to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker, hashtag dope merch. If you have any questions, email pointsbet at allchgo.com, and we'll help you out. And in case you missed it, online sign-up is available in Illinois. You can download the PointsBet app right now, register your account from start to finish, all from your phone. You'll be signing up with the fastest sports book easier than ever, so you can start living your bet life in seconds. What are you waiting for, Corey? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. We hope you love what we're doing here at CHGO. We're up and running. Wait, we're getting close to, what, three Wait, weeks now? For? Three full weeks? Something like that. Yeah. Download points bet. Uh, podcast, live shows every day, every team. Uh, post-game shows, the, the Blackhawks and Bulls guys are doing them. We'll be doing them for Cubs and Sox here coming up pretty soon. What are we, 14 days away from opening day? Wow. Yeah, Countdown is weeks. on. Two Premium weeks. written content from guys like Ryan heading out to Arizona, allchgo.com for the members there. And then, as the French say, Dope Merche <laughs> for all teams. <laughs> Free shirts when you become a member and the members only Discord, the CHGO Lounge. French are very big on some of our Bilingual. merchandise. We need, yes. uh, we, need the, we need the we need the robes. I need you 81. in the robe, in the velvet robe, saying dope Depe merch, in, merch. That, in, that, in, that, in that accent. Sheesh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, we put the uh, poll out yesterday talking about the Cubs' new slogan, and we wanted to know which of the like most recent four or five do you like the most, and uh, everybody in. 
Huh? Yeah, looks like everybody. Everybody in, in was the winner. Fifty-three percent. Corey, you weren't here. What's what slogan do you like? The and most? it's got to be a season slogan because again, I loved embrace the suck. Mm-hmm. No, try not to yeah. suck. Embrace the target. Yeah, I was I was listening to it, and I was like, when you guys start bringing up the we are good, I'm like, Fly the W was but, great. You, but you guys were just like, like didn't under like didn't know what was going on. I'm like, it was a it was Mig Montero just started yelling right. it, and then right. that just like caught on. I'm like, that wasn't a slogan. Eventually, no, you guys it wasn't got a, to it. But. It was not a team slogan. Fly <laughs> yeah. the W was a playoff slogan, <laughs> which is maybe the best. Eventually, yeah. you guys realized like remembered mm-hmm. it was a Miggy Montero thing. But I'm like, at first, I'm like, get there, get there. It's gonna yeah. come to you. But. <laughs> I just I was waiting for it. What what did you like? I mean, so I, you know, first of all, our responses on the at chgo uh, underscore Cubs account very (laughs) colorful, right? You had a lot of people that were yeah. uh, We stinks came up a lot. Uh, There, there was there was a lot of uh, you know Cubs actual slogans that people loved and enjoyed, and there was a lot of uh, ad libbed and uh, improv that people were coming up with that was uh, interesting to read. But I, you know, when I put it on Twitter, I, it's, it wasn't official, but my answer would be, we are good just because I shared that clip of, of Kelly Kroll with Miguel Montero. She's interviewing Chris Bryant and he just comes over screaming with a Budweiser, like, we are good. We are good. Um, You can't beat that. But I was, was let, I, I forget the years, but was let's go 2016. Hashtag let's Boy, go. Boy, I don't remember what year it was. I think that was, was. the W, wasn't it? No, that was a playoff slogan. I think that was, was 2015 playoffs? playoffs. I think so. it was 15, yeah. And I think everybody in was maybe like 2018. That's Cub was after. I think it was let's go. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But mm-hmm. uh, together. I, yeah, I like that. Like let's go was just like simpler, you know, like and, and it didn't allow for as much, you know, uh, manipulation we, as, as some we, of these. We purposely put that's Cub in there, and we thought that that one was going to be the worst, like the least voted for. Turns out Cub Together was the least voted for. Cub Together for. I, I did not like. The, the the video that they had with the, the Beatles cover uh, right. at Wrigley, was it was a good video, but it just, Cub Together is, it, that that's Cub at least was something that minor leaguers said as they were coming up in the system as a term of endearment, like to try right. to like build each other up. Obviously, when you bring that to the, the mass media, right. not everybody knows that. And they're like, that's Cub. Like, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like, let's go everybody in. And maybe that's just nostalgia because those were the, the better years. I don't know how I felt about that. Best years of our lives. At the let's time, yeah. 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 But, like, Glory especially days. now, yeah. yeah, I'm going with that. I remember back in my day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any good comments we missed on the chat? We've tried to get in there a few Rachel times. Rachel said, "Let's go" was 2015. Okay, okay. okay. Man, I, they're always they're always there. They're always fact checking us. That's so great. We like don't even have to do any research. They'll they'll do it for us. And like and like there was uh, so many unofficial ones. Embrace the target was another. You yeah. know, like the Joe Embrace Maddenisms. The there was there was, were, was a lot. Madden of had them. a couple good Madden. ones in there. Yeah. Uh, was it Ferris that just said, uh, "Great show, guys." Still need a beer sponsor, man. We're happy with points bet, and AG1 is better than beer. I'm telling you, you get that gut health going, then any, you can have anything on top of that. That's true. Yeah. That's a good spin zone, Luke. I'm sticking Tom, with that. Tom would prefer we spend the money on beer at Wrigley Field and not get it for free here. Doing All right, show. before this gets out of hand with Corey, we're going to say goodbye <laughs> for the day. Thanks for dropping in to check out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by points bet. Tomorrow we'll be back, and... Corey will either be very, very happy or very, very sad at this point tomorrow. Until then, fly the W.